Good morning, what's up guys? Hellbass here. Today, a little bit different kind of video. I'm actually not out fishing right now yet, but we got a new toy. The Mega 360 from Hummingbird has finally shown up. We're gonna install it on the Ultrex. Not gonna be a super step-by-step, -step, but I'm gonna highlight some things and what I learned and how it went and, and give you some tips on that. And then we're gonna take it on the water and get some first images. I'm gonna go to a lake that I'm kind of familiar with so I know what I'm kind of looking at, and then we can maybe like side image, N360 it, and kind of compare it, and give you my first impressions, first glance, initial reviews of the Mega 360. I ordered it earlier this spring, it took almost all year to get here. I think I ordered it in March or April, and I finally got it in August. Only a couple tournaments left this year, but I want to put it on the boat and test it out, uh, and let you guys know what I think of it. Stay tuned. All right, so here's what we got. We got the main Mega 360 transducer, most everything we should need be in this box. I will let you know if it's not and what you may need if you're installing it. The other thing I got is this Y cable accessory, which should me allow me to split my sonar N360 into the unit. And the goal is to be balling on a budget here and running off a single Gen 4 Helix 10 without having multiple screens up front. And I will report back to you how realistic it is to be able to run 360 effectively on the front of your boat with just a single unit versus having two or three units like you see so many of these people with. So here's all the 360s pack. You've got your stabilizer arm or your mount. Looks like we've got our power and transducer cables here. And then there's the head of the unit safely packed in some foam. The shaft that goes up, looks like we have another accessory box here. The head of the unit with the cord. It's a pretty simple install, I believe. And then here's another cable accessory and some instructions. One more box here. This feels like a hardware box. Yeah, here's the plate and the hardware. So we're about to dig in and uh, I'll give you an update on how this goes in a little bit. All right, one of the first steps is to get this bracket on. It can only go one way. The bolt holes go in here. They give you four bolts. They only fit in the one these size holes. Tighten these on, get them in place. And then if you've got a bounce buster like this, you'll actually take that off and remount it to the outside of these blocks. So we're gonna do that real quick. Right, just tighten up the bolts here. Make it easier on yourself, have a half ounce socket or half ounce wrench for these bolts. I did have to make a little modification to make the clearance work on this. Just had to take a little bit out of that aluminum plate. So if you have a bounce buster, you may have to adapt it or you'd have to put spacers in there, or use longer bolts. I decided rather than go to the hardware store and find new parts, I would just take a little out of that aluminum bracket. All right, actually mounting the transducer, you can actually kind of pre-assemble all these bolts. They slot in and then you can kind of set it in place. And then once you get it, you can tighten it up and then three eighths inch socket or wrench for these. And then you need a little hex head for these screws here. But so far been pretty easy. Uh, you got to route these cables through here. And otherwise it's been a pretty easy process so far. All right, quick update. We got most everything installed. We got the power ran down through here. And I had a direct run tied or direct run from the batteries up to this helix, so I just tied into that. So we'll see if that's a mistake, but I got reasonable wire up here and I split the power between the 360 and the helix. So then I got it wrapped in my uh, little troll jacket here. And if you need one of these and it's cheap, I'll put a link down below. These are actually super inexpensive from Amazon. You can make your own for like less than 10 bucks. I'll put a link to that in case you need to, uh, you know, if you're installing electro electronics, transducers, you need something to wrap your cords, keep things clean, messy up here. I'll finish wrapping up the cords and tie everything up with, you know, once I test it out here. But the last thing we got to do is tip this down and get the alignment. So basically this round part here needs to be in line with the parallel, like the nose of your boat, the you know, right down the seam. So that's like your your true forward and that's what aligns your transducer. So when you're looking at your screen and you see a boulder or a grass patch or a log or a brush pile off at a certain direction, when you have that straight forward, then you know where you're casting and making sure the alignment is calibrated with your boat. So we're gonna do that next here in the garage. And then uh, it looks like based on firing it up, you actually have to have it in the water to operate it. There's some sensors or something like that in here that need to be in the water for it to work because you just get an error message. But I could see that it was connected. Uh, so we'll get that on the water uh, here at the end of the video and test it out. Here we got it mostly deployed in the garage so we can get the alignment. So basically this rounded part right here, we want, we've got it kind of tight, but we want to like just have it. So basically this rounded part, not this squared off part, basically straight in line with the boat. So I think that's pretty close. Might have to fine tune it once we actually get it out where I can put it in the water. And then you've got this height adjustment bracket for your trolling motor so you don't lift it too high 
and actually have it hit the prop because this can move independently up here. So I'll need to work on this. I'm probably going to set it a little higher now, and I'll probably fine tune it when I get in the water uh, and find that sweet spot for when, you know, I want to be something I can like pull up and still fish shallow with the trolling motor and not hit this. And at the same time, I want it deep enough so it stays in the water most of the time when I'm fishing because if this is not in the water, it doesn't work and doesn't read. So we're going to find that sweet spot uh, when we get out in the water, but I'm going to set it probably a little higher than it should be and then kind of loosen it and lower it a little bit once we get to the lake and test it out. You basically got it kind of hand tight here and now that we got it kind of where we want it, we'll just tighten it up with these little set screws and these hex and you don't have to go real tight, but that's how you tighten it up. So it's easy to adjust on the water the first few times you go out if you need to, as long as you bring a hex wrench with you. Because I'm impatient, I wanted to try to test this before I got out there. So I thought, well, tipping it down wasn't it, but it looks like you have to get it in some water. And so what you have to do is get a bucket of water and you just gotta cover up these two little connectors, which basically tell it's underwater electrodes. And then it will basically think it's in the water and it'll start working. So there it's, a, it's preparing the pot. I've got it in the water. And obviously we're not getting any good readings because I'm in a bucket in my garage, but you can see that the 360 starts to turn. So now I feel confident when we go to the lake, we'll be in good shape and uh, we'll get good results. Looks like she's all hooked up. The only thing we got left to do is fine tune the height adjustments when we get on the water, see how it works. So far, so good. It actually was a pretty easy task. Didn't take that long. I didn't exactly time it. If you have a few hex heads, a few of the right wrenches and sockets on hand, uh, it goes pretty quick. And if you're good at wiring in the power and connecting to your existing power, you shouldn't have a problem installing this in, I don't know, an hour-ish, maybe? Shouldn't be that long. It took me longer to find the tools to make the adjustment to that little bracket so that my bounce buster, I could put it on. Next stop, the lake. All right, we are out here on a local lake that I'm familiar with because I want to be on a lake that I kind of knew something about that I had some wave paints on to test out this 360. We got it in the water. We're getting some images. I'm going to show you a few things that I've already figured out. I'm running this thing on one unit. I still got my map, my split screen. I've got it set up so I can still run map and 2D sonar. But then another preset here, I've got my 360 and a little bit of split of map and you can adjust the width of that. Uh, and you can see we got some waypoints and you can kind of, you can kind of see this, but there's weed clumps. It's kind of an inside turn that I've marked before. Not get into completely what we're looking at here, but you can definitely see the weeds already on the 360. Um, but you see I'm right next to some waypoints. But one thing, if you want waypoints on your 360 with a helix, that is possible. I know a lot of people think you need a Solix for that, but what you need is this Hummingbird model right here with the heading sensor. And I'll put a link down in the description to this puck because this is really important. This will help your deep water fishing and allow you to have a heading sensor like this that shows you the direction of your boat amongst your waypoints. Uh, plus, when connected with a Helix and a Hummingbird, you can put your waypoints on your 360. And let me show you that setting. Go into Menu, Accessories, Mega 360 Settings, Go down to navigation on 360, turn that on, and just like that, you can see there are my waypoints on the 360 overlaid. So now, because I don't need as much map because I can see those waypoints, I can actually lessen the amount of map I'm showing and then put more 360 on my screen so I get better detail on a Helix 10 on a single unit. So there's some great points. We're gonna fish around a little more, see if we can catch some fish. We're looking at some weeds on inside turn here. I'm also gonna to try to find and show you some other stuff and images to go along with this. The other thing I had to do to get my splitter to work is I had to go into connect to transducer and select the transducer plus the Mega360. When I just had the Mega360 selected, I wasn't getting the that down sonar. So you have to go in there and make that setting adjustment as well. If you want to run a single unit and split and be able to get that and this with one unit. First bass of the day, fishing some grass clumps. We'll show you what those look like on the 360. But strong little Bass Tech three-quarter ounce jig with a little 
salt bug from Arsenal on there. Not a giant, but got a flipping grass fish already. Let's go look what that grass looks like on the 360. So you can see we're up here actually picking apart some old waypoints I have, and you can actually see them on the screen in relation to the boat. And as the boat turns, these uh, you know these waypoints will pivot. And we're actually really close to where I caught them in the past in this thick milfoil, but you can see it's just really thick milfoil all the way around there. Honestly, don't need the 360 to fish this kind of stuff, but it's interesting to see what it looks like on your screen in an area that you've already been fishing, in an area that you're familiar with. So that's the biggest tip. When you get a new piece of sonar, whether it's live scope, mega 360, side imaging, down view, anything like that, go to a lake that you're familiar with, practice it, learn what those images are telling you on stuff that you already know and then when you go to a new lake you're going to be a lot more comfortable when you're dissecting new water with these new tools all right we couldn't duplicate that flipping bite so i've dropped off a little more on the weed edge you can see here on the 360 like the nose of the boat is up in thicker grass right on the edge and then like out to the side so i'm basically sitting almost maybe just slightly on top of the edge but out behind me you can see that's more sand, uh, not so much weed. So you got weeds, right? So the weed line is basically right here, and my boat's sitting right there. So it helps you better understand, according to this little hump here, where I'm in relation to the hump uh, and where I am in relation to the weed line on that hump. So it just gives you even better visual reinforcement while you're fishing offshore uh, to make precise presentations, depending on if you want that clean bottom, maybe there's a little rock there, uh, or if you want to actually be in the grass. Depends on where you find the bass that day. All right, it's a little windy, hopefully you can hear okay, but I'm pulling up on this uh, offshore spot and the picture's pretty clear, but we're in the waves, so that distorts a little bit, but we've kind of got like an old sunken boat lift dock or something out here uh, in some deeper water. Uh, we're going to go ahead and pitch to this, but you can see this uh, image that's just in front of the boat on my old waypoints helps you make that accurate cast. And here's that same object on side imaging. That we just fished. All right, we got the boat on spot lock. I'm kind of fishing the inside weed or inside turn on a weed line off the back of the boat here. Just the way the wind is positioned. Kind of a tough day today. I haven't done a lot of fishing. Kind of playing around with the uh, the new 360, but you know, we got high skies, no clouds, east wind, kind of post frontal. Not ideal for catching fish, but still, I mean, the main goal of today is to get out and, and test the 360 and look at it. So I'm going to show you what we're fishing here can see on my map that there's the waypoint of my normal fishing behind us and that's that waypoint right there what it's doing is sitting there you can see like a little rock a little hard spot kind of clear kind of sandy gravelly rocky area right on the edge of this coontail clumps and milfoil right here and that's usually where they sit allowing me to hold my boat here right upwind and then cast backwards and I can see my waypoint and then I can see where the grass clumps are and then I can see the hard spots and I can kind of fish all this. Now we didn't get any fish today, but this allows me to really set up my boat and then reconfirm what I've seen on my side imaging in the past and make sure I'm casting where I want to be casting uh, in the high percentage areas. Something I just saw, I was working up this weed line <clears throat> where I caught fish before and right out here I noticed a little cluster of what looked like to be bluegill beds and I threw my jig worm out there and I actually felt the bluegills like pecking my line uh, and pecking my worm. Now I didn't catch any bass this time, but that's the perfect example of the type of stuff you might see when you're using your 360 fish in your traditional spots that might lead you to casting to something and maybe getting some bonus fish or finding some fish you wouldn't have otherwise found. All right, we're gonna keep moving and grooving, looking at a few more spots. This is a lot of fun seeing these weed lines on the 360. Uh, I did notice back here one place where I would have probably normally followed the contour out at the depth I was fishing. The weeds actually stayed shallower. So like I was originally on the weed line on like a 12 to 14 foot break. But then if I follow 12 to 14 feet out, the weeds disappeared. The, feed, the weeds were actually having 8 to 10. So I kind of flattened off and followed the weeds. Now I didn't catch any fish there. It definitely felt like I kept my bait in the strike zone better there. So we're going to see if we can check a few more spots and catch more fish. Keeper, and the jig worm, just falling down that weed edge. 
Hopefully there's more and bigger ones. Little guy. It's the good stuff right there. Little, little guy. Got a little string pull. It's not bigs. Just slipping down this grass edge here. Catching a couple squirts. All right, we did not light the fish on fire catching them today, but we only had a few hours. Fishing definitely wasn't great. We caught a few fish, but we learned a ton about 360 in our first outing. Takeaways. Uh, I definitely gonna see how this is a tool that's gonna help me catch more fish. Uh, even though it didn't today put a lot of fish in the boat, I can see how this will make me more efficient, make my cast more accurate, put my bait in places where fish live more often see unique things uh, and make casts to things that I didn't know were there uh, that will put fish in the boat. Hope that you saw a couple setting tips and I think the question we really want to answer today is can you ball on a budget and effectively run a Mega 360 on a single Helix unit and the answer is yes. So the Helix 10 did a really good job. I could see plenty. Uh, you can zoom in, you can do split screen. Uh, I showed you some tricks on how to overlay waypoints and set the settings so you can have sonar and mega 360 with a splitter adapter links in the description down below uh, links into the gps antenna you need so that you can put the waypoints overlaid on your mega 360. Uh, we're only going to learn more so if you're interested in mega 360 hummingbird content subscribe to the channel hit the bell notification so you don't miss any videos we're going to learn more there's gonna be more videos so stay tuned and if you've got questions about your mega 360 that you want answered Leave them down in the comments below and I'll either try to answer them below or in a future video try to adjust that because we're going to learn a lot more. We're going to learn more about settings. This was just the first day out and we learned a whole bunch. So I'm excited to unlock this and share this with you. And if you guys want to continue to catch more big bass and suck less, make sure you catch one of these videos right here.